Oh man, that might be it. You know, I have a lot of power. <laughs> you better be nice. Winter has arrived in the Sea of Cortez. What are you laughing at? Deep thoughts with Jackie. <laughs> it was like, it was violent, actually. It was wild. Look at how dirty that is. Wow. This feels like our space again, instead of just like, bam, you're outside. <laughs> I thought we were looking at a new autopilot again, man. We are Mike and Taylor. And these are our dogs, Penny and Lucy. We sold our home and nearly everything we owned, moved aboard a 40 foot boat and sailed from Seattle. This is the story of us making our way. Well, hello from my spirit to Santo one of our favorite places in the Sea of Cortez. We made a jump from Isla San Francisco down here yesterday. And we pulled into one of our like favorite little secret anchorages here. It's a, it's a small little cove and we squeezed in with just one other boat last night and it became so calm and peaceful. It was such a beautiful night, and then we got in bed and proceeded to have the most awful night we've had on the boat, period. All things considered, we were pretty lucky. We didn't drag anchor. We didn't wake up on the rocks. Nothing broke. That's all good. But some wind way out yonder created some absolutely monster waves. They came into the small little cove and then like reverberated. And it was a rodeo up in here. It was like, it was violent actually. Just huge waves coming in, just huge waves. So we were just doing this, our bow, like we had waves come over the bow. Uh, Chandler was way up on the davits and he was getting dunked in the water. It was wild. We didn't get any footage of it, not only because it was nighttime and hard to film it anyway, but we were just kind of, you know, concerned with <laughs> taking care of business. We thought that we were gonna have some problems with our snubber or our anchor, but luckily everything like held and like I said, nothing broke. <sighs> but what? A night, y'all. <laughs> what a night. Oh, that was definitely the worst night we've had on Anchor. So we're feeling groggy and a little grumpy today. Finished up some work and now we're gonna hit the road and our goal is to find a really good hiding place because <laughs> there's an actual Norte coming in again. It's like a four or five day event. And it's gonna be a big one. So we are gonna hope to find something that will keep us remotely comfortable here for the next, you know, few days. It's too bad, this spot is so beautiful. The water is just so epic and we would have loved to hang out here, but last night was no bueno. So we gotta find a more protected spot. If it had gotten any worse, I think we would have had to pick up anchor and leave. But that's the thing, there was nowhere to go. Like I know, we were all like, these anchorages face the same way. Yeah, it's probably 20 miles to the closest better anchorage, but I mean, even like, if it had gotten much worse, we would have just had to go like heave to out in open water. It was, it was not good. I remember at one point I was like looking out the window over our bed and you know, the moon was like rising so you could kind of make out some shapes and stuff, but it, you know, started off really dark. I was looking out the window, so the port light over our bed, and a crest of the wa of a wave made eye contact with me. What's that, like four feet off the water? Five feet off the water? Yeah. Like they were, they were big waves for an anchorage. <laughs> it was nuts and so loud. Dogs were scared, it was brutal. Anyway, lest you thought we were having far too much fun out here. <laughs> living, the, living the dream. Sometimes it straight up sucks. And last night, it straight up sucked. I'm very tired. 
yeah. Norte is here and we actually do have some good protection in here so it hasn't been too bad but when you look through the binoculars out onto the uh, the sea it looks a crazy town I would not want to be out there it is also freezing uh, I don't think today the temperature is getting above 70 and I know there's a lot of people who just went <laughs> 70 freezing <laughs> but let me tell you with this very brisk wind. It's cold. It's cold. We have busted out sweatshirts, sweatpants, socks, slippers. It's like, it's like winter up in here. We have like no fresh food left, literally. So we are like just eating carbs on carbs on carbs. It's been like pastas and rices and cereal and just, you know, canned corn and whatever. But we're gonna go on for, uh, into the beach. It's probably gonna be a very wet ride in, so I'm wearing a raincoat. Oh, look at all this dog hair flying into the house. So, off we go. such a beautiful spot but the weather has just been it's just been blowing for like what three days now it's days on days three days there's gonna be a one day break and then another week three or four days of, of heavy winds just feeling a little stuck and ready to move on but not a bad place to be stuck penny leave the dead crab alone Thank you. We did choose really well, I think, on this anchorage, though. Like, yeah, we've been really protected. It, the wind doesn't feel that bad in here. Yeah. And it looks gross out there. Yeah. So. It's just, uh, winter has arrived in the Sea of Cortez. So we're just riding it out right now, waiting for Mike's Fam Bam to come in here soon, which will be really nice. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, and then basically as soon as they take off, I think we're planning on crossing over to the mainland. Penny, what's that walk? What's that walk? Lucy, you better, I'm not getting that ball. You better bring that in. Lately we've had a series of things break 
which I guess is part of living on a boat, but it's always frustrating when it happens. So what's, a, what's our list? Our outboard, the lower seals are still bad. Those are en route, so hopefully I'll we'll be able to get that fixed. Our canvas is getting restitched currently, so hopefully that'll be all done. Our radar has been finicky since we came down the coast of, of the states, but that recently is almost just completely not working. I think that's just gonna be a new cable that I have to send up. The new one the other day is the autopilot went out, and this is the, you know, I just rebuilt our hydraulic autopilot ram. Might just be an electrical connection, might be that one of my replaced seals is bad and we've lost hydraulic pressure, or it could be that the solenoid is bad. None of that's good. So I'm gonna crawl back in there and figure out what's going on. And then that's all on top of like a solar panel I gotta install, time to service our winches, I forget, all the other usual maintenance and oil change, boat life. Anyway, the most pressing is the autopilot because we're gonna cross the Sea of Cortez pretty soon to head over to the mainland and we are gonna want an autopilot. That's on my list this afternoon is to try to figure out what the issue is. I'll show you what's going on though, up at the helm. So it's in standby, I can turn, everything's good. And then if I hit auto, I should just hold that heading. And as the boat starts to turn off of the heading, it should be turning the wheel. It's not supposed to be doing this. So time to climb back in the hole and see what the issue is. Such a tight squeeze. All right, here we go. Here's the rudder shaft. Here's the end of the autopilot. And that is supposed to attach right here. And this guy just threads in here, but it's come undone. So stupid me probably forgot to tighten this lock nut and then this shaft probably has some turn in it yeah so this thing just unthreaded itself dummy mike could have been a lot worse though Cram down in here still. That should be it. It was literally just, I've never, I just forgot to kind of turn that end fitting and that nut against each other so they kind of lock. Whew. I thought we were looking at a new autopilot again, man. Let's hit auto. Hey. We turn the other way. Usually, easiest solution ends up being the best one, or the easiest problem is the first one to look at. I don't know what I'm saying, but I think you get it. What are you laughing at? Deep thoughts for Jackie. <laughs> Instead of having answers on a math test, they should just call them impressions. And if you got a different impression, so what? Can't we all be brothers? Deep thoughts with Mac. Okay. Well, we can check one more project off the list. We'll see, I don't know how long these uh, these adhesive strips are gonna last because the dogs really do a number on them and you know, they're getting wet and I don't know, they live a tough life, but here, we'll keep our fingers crossed. We got our canvas back from our uh, canvas guy who's a fellow cruiser. And so we're gonna put it all back on and get some shade again. Very cool. This very has cool. been very bizarre and skeletal. <laughs>
this edge. It's all new. Shade protection. Wow, it's so much nicer out here. Much better. It feels like our space again instead of just like, bam, you're outside. It's a little bit cozier. A little shade, just in time for the next wind to come through. And no rips. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. This was, it is still, part of the problem is that the fit of our particular canvas on our frame is extremely snug. And it still is. And I was a little worried things were gonna rip a little bit, but they didn't. It's like two millimeters too snug, I think, in some spots. Yeah, everything's just a little too tight. And there's not, there's not quite enough, without like cutting some of these little, like two, you know, a couple millimeters off of these little pipes is not enough adjustment in the frames, but. So I was a little nervous, but there she, oh wait. We didn't do that one. Oh. All the stitching has been redone. Oh yeah. Okay, that's what she said. We are here in La Paz. My family was supposed to come in and have a little visit, but they all got COVID like right before they came. So that got canceled. So we're just, uh, we're here in the marina anyway, cause we had already paid for it and we got some projects to do. So I finally was able to get the, some of the seals for our outboard and hopefully I can finally get this thing fixed. We first discovered this issue in V Cove. So it's been a while. We've just been rowing a lot and using the outboard like very, very carefully and uh, as little as possible. But here's, I got the lower unit off. I'm draining the oil. Basically the issue is we got seals up here, seals down here. I, th I think these ones have gone bad. And this is like a gearbox. This is basically the transmission. So there's gear oil in there, but now there's water getting in. I'm uh, trying to get all the water and oil out of the bottom and I'm gonna see if I can get these top seals out and uh, hopefully the ones I got are the same. Interesting note on Yamaha outboards, unless you know where it came from, like what region, and call Yamaha in that region, so South America or the United States or the Caribbean or Mexico, they can't look up your engine unless you're calling the region it was sold in. So I've like Mexico Yamaha can't look it up by the serial number, United States Yamaha can't look it up by the serial number. I asked like, isn't there someone in Japan like at the corporate office who could look this up? They said no. So I couldn't just look up the parts. So I just did a million hours of research trying to figure out what seals I was gonna need. Cause once you pull them out, they're destroyed and you can't put them back in. So hopefully I got the right stuff. We'll find out. After a lot of work, we finally got the old seals out and then devised a way to press the new seals in using a piece of hollow stainless tubing. This was a bigger project than we filmed and at the time it looked like replacing those seals did the trick, but this one will be continued. Ready? Yep, very salty line. Yeah. In 45 minutes, <laughs> we'll be there. So salty. And then it was on to our finicky radar. All right, so I think here's what's causing our issue. We have a gimbaled radar mount, and that means that the cable is always moving and working a little bit. Plus the, the connection here at the, I think is a little funky, so see if this works. 
So using messenger lines, we removed the old cable and ran a new one, only to discover that not only was the new one we had way too short, but after having to then rerun the old one, Mike recognized that the issue was actually happening down on the other side of the mast, where the cable connects to the power supply module. So after hours of running cables, it was a quick adjustment under the berth that solved our radar issues for good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. It wasn't long until Mike's next trip up the mast. Time to go up the mast again. <laughs> Step one: put on chair diaper. Put on your diaper. Okay. All right. In just very, four short hours. Very salty. And when you did the wash, did you um, douche the track real good by chance? No, I just explained that to you. I said, when you're up there, can you send a good squeeze down these lines because I soaked the, the bundles of lines, but not these individual stretches and not tracks and not the sail track, none of that shit. Okay, well, you didn't talk about the sail tracks and that was what I was asking about, so. You know, I have a lot of power right now. You better be nice. So I think it's really important for uh, cruisers to inspect their own rigging so you really get familiar with your rig and we try to do it kind of regularly and before any you know major sailing and it's pretty straightforward I'm just kind of looking for things like broken strands in the in the wire missing cotter pins missing clevis pins cracks in basically anything the mass spreaders any fittings any pins um, you're just kind of really like going over every square inch of the rigging and having a really close look. So far everything is looking good other than being very dirty. Look at how dirty that is. Wow. Lucy, where am I? Lucy! <laughs> where am I? Never thinks to look up. After a flurry of other smaller tasks, including engine maintenance and a super deep clean of Via both inside and out, she was in ship shape. And the time had come to not only leave the marina, but to depart the Sea of Cortez for good. Join us next time as we embark on a four-day, three-night voyage south to mainland Mexico. All citizens are being told to just stay indoors. It's like pretty serious situations. And it's eventful. We got a hole, like a big tear in the main. So that's a real bummer. I'm like, that was crazy. I'm shaking. Holy fucking shit. Been a little bit of a frustrating passage so far. Cactus says. Aww. Aww. You're so cute. Oh, so cute. I know. I'm gonna be on ten tap. I can't see this. No. No. Oh my god. So bright. Switching to the GoPro for the autopilot fix. <sighs> Fuck, I'm tired. Okay. For those of you, smash, smash. Okay. <laughs> first try. Nope. <laughs> All right, third time's a charm. Oh. Oh. Okay, four times a charm. So good. It's like surface away. <laughs>
What? Do rigging cleaning with your hands. Yeah, that looks pretty good. <laughs>